Because that's one of the things Gabby's like looking around it. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Louise is going to be all in her books. Right. <laughs> 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 it's like, Hello. And, and it is. And it is. Good session. Good evening, and welcome to the September 18th meeting of the Needham Finance Committee. We are holding the meeting in hybrid fashion. Um, anyone on the on Zoom will be able to view, but um, not necessarily be able to participate unless they're on the agenda. Um, okay. First, are there any citizens? Nope. Nope. I'm seeing any. Not aware of any. Okay. Great. Molly, approval of the minutes. Yeah. Of Madam Chair, I um, Molly, thank you for preparing the minutes. I draft minutes. I didn't have any um matters with them and. Uh, or any revisions needed. So I make a motion that we approve the minutes of our last meeting, which was on September 4th, 2024. Second that. Great. Let's just take a roll call vote for that. Yes. 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 And the chair votes yes. Great. Uh, second item on the agenda is to appropriate for the high school tennis courts. So would you all like to come up? Hi. I'm Dave Harrick, I'm the chair of the uh, Community Preservation Committee. It's from Maureen Callahan. Hi, Chair. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we uh, have Review the uh, application of the uh, Art Rec Commission for the uh, tennis courts at high school. This project uh, would replace four of the tennis courts and uh, put in four new tennis courts. The tennis courts will be uh, on precess, but post tension concrete, uh, which is a pretty much state of the art technology. Uh, it has a much longer life than the current uh, asphalt and tennis space. So the, the uh, community preservation committee had a number of meetings where we reviewed the project. Um, the appropriation uh, would be about OOD $1.4 million. Uh, I think the total project cost is uh, $2.7 million. So the town would, would pick up the rest. Uh, we had a public hearing last. Uh, Last week, and the uh, input was uh, mostly favorable. Um, this project is very similar to the project that uh, had gone through the system last year, but it was pulled because of some uh, last minute uh, issues. The project went through the uh, planning board. We got a special permit from the planning board where I believe it. Uh, it satisfied uh, the, the input or, or concerns that the general public had. So I, I think uh, the, con the CPC thinks it's a good project. We're voting later on um, tonight, and the committee seems favorable to approving this project. So we're here to answer any questions that have uh, that you might have. I see that Stacy is here too, who knows the details of the project. So, mm -hmm. uh, right. glad to answer. Madam Chair, sure. I have a series of questions if I could. Sure. Uh, thank you for sending the materials. Um, I, will, I think it was in, Lauren, Lauren Spinney, who is our CPC administrator. Thank you for sending. I was I just, I want to start with just a picture of the rendering. Um, am I correct that the, the, the the four existing courts will be re can I know they're going to be redone, but it looks like the layout is going to be different, that they're going to be facing in a different direction lengthwise as opposed to sideways. And I, I mean, I think one of the four existing courts, the four existing courts will stay in the same that they are now layout. They will be moved slightly apart, but the um, orientation, thank you, orientation. And I don't know if it's east, west, or north, south. So the orientation north, is south. the same. Orientation will be the same. Okay. 
Um, all right, so that's my first question. My second question is, can we just have a schedule? So assuming this this is approved in October, um, what will be the schedule thereafter? Sure. Anyone can answer. Yeah, that. our plan is to go out to bid um, in the uh, early winter to try to mobilize. We're trying to phase construction out with the school, knowing that that parking lot might be used for some of our staging of equipment, and that's a high hot commodity during the school year. So we're trying to figure out what can be done in advance, what equipment can be ordered, and what can be mobilized on site prior to school closing, so we can try to hit the summer construction season and have it completed before school reopens. Um, thank you. And then, uh, are there any plans or um, or not either um, to line them for anything other than tennis? No. Yeah, and will it be signs or anything like that saying no pickleball? The planning board decision that we have explicitly excludes pickleball. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, and then just I was wondering on the, the, the CPC part, the, the 1.4 amount, um, I guess why that amount as opposed to something less or more? If it's a $3 million project, how was the 1.4 arrived at? Um, I would you know, defer that question to the, to the town. I think um, on the previous projects, um, the CPC funded part of the project and the town funded the other part of the project. Um, I, I'm not privy to the, to the logic or the calculation. That, uh, I can take a part of it and I'm sure they could as well. But um, uh, the part on our side is I think we've been asked to have both a town and CPC partnership on some of these projects that the CPC actually wanted to see the town investing some of its um, general resources into the projects in addition to CPC funds. Um, my understanding was that sort of happened when we had um, more private projects that were being introduced. And again, that same request was made that they the um, organizations that were requesting funds would put some of their own funds forward in order to complement CPC funds. And then the actual 1.4, I think, was the um, when we were originally building out the budget. That was sort of the very high level cost estimate that we had when we were doing the five year plan um, before we had completed design. And I think before we knew we were going to be expanding into eight courts. So that was sort of the original ask. That was the number that right. was plugged into their budget. And that was the number that we decided to carry forward when the cost of the project increased. So the original, when the, the Warren article that was withdrawn was for 1.4, correct? Which was believe I think it was for 1.4. That's a number that sticks with me. The CPC contribution yeah. has always been 1.4. Yeah, I thought the article actually did the article ask for three million? I don't know. Three million. It, it wasn't two point six million. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That seems so it's a half a million or yeah four hundred thousand per quart. Three hundred fifty thousand per quart. Is that just a rough? Is there anything in particular that makes this project more complicated to add it to significant costs? Um, I think one of the things that they chose to use a low maintenance product. So the actual product that they're using is supposed to have a much larger lifespan than a traditional asphalt port. Um, so that was one, it's an investment up front as opposed to having to resurface it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is it just is in close proximity to neighbors. So we needed to add more, more screening, both for sound and visual. Um, and that was one of the reasons we withdrew it in the spring and chose to bring it back um, in the fall as we wanted to go th through the planning board process um, to fully design the project because there were some changes that needed to be made before we ended up um, asking for the full funds. Okay. And I would add the stormwater system. Stormwater, yeah. It's yeah. quite an extensive uh, stormwater uh, collection and infiltration system that meets all of our local and state um, state. Right. It means there's more important with four more courts, there's more impervious service right. than there was. Yeah. You're, well, you're eliminating a field for it to put in four courts, so you're going to have more impervious service. So I would expect your stormwater is yeah. going to be significant. Yeah. And the old impervious courts were. Legacy like in before we had stormwater regulations. Yeah. yeah, and I would add that that was a big concern. Yeah, in April. Hopefully, we won't make the same mistake we did when we did the field uh, with the drain. Did we discover after the fact there was a drain problem under the, like, the, the, the McLeod field? No, not McLeod. Why no, 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 no. The field here at the high school. The, um, I thought we had to 
Okay. We did add additional drainage to that project. Got it. Okay. So what is the um cost of of standard, the construction of a standard tennis court versus this kind of lower maintenance, higher upfront costs? Like what is the differential? So I can answer that and I don't have my notes in front of me because we um we moved to post tension concrete very early on in the project. Um, it is a significant increase. Um, I would say the delta is about a million dollars uh, wow. between the two. Now, the reason why we're going with post tension concrete or we're requesting that is it is becoming the industry norm at high schools, communities, and colleges mm -hmm. because of the warranty. So asphalt courts in New England can last without cracking. They guarantee it for one year. <laughs> They run about five to seven years before you're stripping them and re-asphalting them. Post tension con concrete currently is guaranteed um, full warranty for 25 years, but they're already seeing it move to about 35 to 40 years. And we don't know how long it will go before it cracks uh, because it's still fairly new. Uh, post tension concrete is similar to a parking garage. So uh, zero maintenance aside from repainting the lines after the sun sort of uh, wears them out, which would be the same for asphalt courts. Um, so little to no maintenance over the course of at least a minimum of 25 years. And if anything happens, they are warranty. Whereas in, especially in New England, the asphalt, it, it's cracking as early as two years where people are having to like take off the top layer and re-asphalt it. So it's a lot of more maintenance regularly. So is yeah. it safe to assume that you don't plan to come back to do a major project for 25 years on new sports, given that we're making the investment now? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. sports, I'll be back for other things, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. that makes that clear. <laughs> if you look at the life cycle cost, yeah. the uh, post-tension concrete has a lower life cycle cost. For first stress. Similar. And that's just resurfacing. That's not, I mean, even staff hours to maintain these kinds of courts um, just drops down so really. Why? What are the maintenance? We still got to sweep them, right? Mm -hmm. We still have to sweep them, but um, so with the frost teams in New England, we do have to do some crack repair. Um, so we, we do a lot of band aids every year to try and keep the surface as playable as possible and then at some point the cracks become too wide and no tennis court resurfacer will guarantee filling the cracks after a certain point which is why the tennis courts up the high school still have those cracks because we could fill them and they'll just crack again <laughs> it's not a solid surface anymore and has that been the experience down at mills with the courts yes so the mills courts, they could use a total resurfacing, um, but I did have uh, Cape Island Tennis come in and ask for a budget number. And they basically told me, you're better off holding off for a few years and then doing a bigger project than wasting your money patching this every few years, which found um, interesting from a vendor who could benefit from me spending too much money. Um, and like I said, the industry norm, Lexington, Wellesley, Weston, everybody's sort of moving to, even in the community courts, this post-tension concrete, um, specifically for the maintenance and the long-term life. Dave, just a, a question for you on the, the, the town funding part of it. Um, I see it's 1.1 million from the athletic facility stabilization fund. Yes. Assuming that's approved, what will be the approximate balance left in that fund after? A few hundred thousand. So we're pretty much depleting that yes. entirely um, to do that. And then 500 from the overlay. Um, any particular reason why it's overlay as opposed to free cash or anything else? It's free cash is not certified yet. So that's my only other That's your only other funding source. Yeah. Yeah. And how much will we sort of is there? Will that deplete the that fund or what will the? Uh, yes, um, if everything in the special town meeting warrants approved, we'll need six hundred thousand to overlay. Um, estimating a million dollars in overlay this year. So five hundred here is a hundred thousand somewhere else. For yes, it's another warrant article. 
Um, then my just my final question, if I may, is um, so the PBVC obviously isn't overseeing. So will you will DPW be managing this project? The DPW engineering division will be providing the other Okay, so and are you guys comfortable that the three million is um, going to cover all your soft costs and all your contingencies and everything? And so. <laughs> The early review, the design, and the construction estimate provided um, and made sure that there was sufficient contingency to cover all of those costs. I have no further questions. Anybody else? No. So I, I say that we leave this to our yeah. next meeting and then vote on it after we hear that it's it, been approved by the. You're CDC. voting on this later tonight. Is that Thank you very much. We'll put it this way. If yeah. you guys, after you vote on it favorably, want to put your head in the door and say you did so, I think yeah. that, would that would work. That would work. We just can't go first. But we appreciate the presentation. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, turning to other warrant articles. What's Look at article number one, appropriate for roadway improvements, ever so. So the town has been working for the past 18 months with Eversource in a much more collaborative fashion. Um, I wouldn't say it's a perfect relationship, but we're doing a lot more um, work together to try to make sure that the um, particularly the natural gas main work that they're doing in town that they're required to do by state mandate is done so in a way that is more manageable for the town's infrastructure. And part of this is that they have chosen to um, do work in roads that we have the plans to refinish um, and sometimes interrupting our schedule and pushing it back a year. And part of the reason they do this is so they don't have to pay to resurface the road or do a permanent trench because they know we're going to come in and that we're going to resurface that road anyways. What we've done is we have worked with the utility to make sure that the funds that they were putting aside for that project to do trench repair end up getting transferred to the town to offset the town's cost of repaving that road. Um, we have just started this program um, in the last year. The first time we um, looked at this was on Webster, which we received funds at the annual town meeting in order to repave Webster. We've done some of our um, preliminary work there and some of the paving, and we're going to continue um, on to complete that project. We have also negotiated some um, off-cycle work that we've allowed them to do work in town because the volume that they have to accomplish to meet their state mandates is so high um, that they are coming in when the winter allows them to come in to do work off-cycle under certain winter conditions. Um, in order for that privilege of being able to come in and do work when we would typically not allow work to be done, they are also paying for a full um, a full uh, restoration of the road curb to curb. Um, typically, those roads are not under moratorium, and so they wouldn't be required to do a curb to curb, but because they're having that extra privilege of having access to the community when they wouldn't normally, that's one of their conditions. Um, essentially, the vast amount of work that they're doing in the town is prematurely degrading our pavement condition index because the worst thing you can do for a road is cut into it. Um, we have already made agreements to collect these funds, but what we don't have is a mechanism to spend these funds um, because they would be general receipts. They don't jet, they don't go back to the DPW to provide paving services. And this article would allow the funds that we're collecting in order to mitigate the work that Eversource is doing to be reappropriated to public works to continue doing paving work. So who's actually doing the paving? Are you doing it? The town is yeah. doing the paving. Yeah. And it's one of the few things that we actually tend to get a better rate than the utilities for. Mm -hmm. hmm. Because we tend to do a lot of the preparation work on the front end. So it's a lot less mate. It's a lot less intensive than when they do um, work for a utility. So I had two questions. One is um, you talked about this a little bit, the method of determining the amount that Eversource has set aside. And you know, I see the number here at 255,000. So if you can explain a little bit about how they come to that number. And then the other is if you have a point of view on for these roads that this amount is tagged for, how much, what percentage of the total cost does that offset 
for us? Sure. So for the um, the roads where we gave them permission to do the work off cycle. Um, so in this particular case, it's Tanglewood, Damon, Tillotson, Hollow Ridge, um, and Pathias. They are covering 100% the cost of the resurfacing. They propose to us a budgetary number, and we compare that with our contract cost to make sure that the number they are providing us will cover the full cost of our contract. For Nichols and Sunnyside, those are roads where they were just doing trench work and they weren't under moratorium, so they're not obligated to repave. And the cost of doing the trench work for a full repave is about 50% the cost. Um, because of where the trench is located, you have to kind of go to two feet of either side of the trench. And then you also have to pave all of the service lines on the opposite side of the road, which kind of gives you that lovely zebra effect on the other side. Um, it's not that much more expensive to repave a road than it is to do a full trench repair, repair on that volume of work. Um, for example, when DPW does any sewer or water main work, we always bid, build into the price of the contract a full repave because the end product is really not that good when you do a full trench repair on that type of work. Um, and uh, the cost differential isn't that significant. So just so I understand it, so this is sort of basically saying we've gotten, we have received or will receive 250 256,000 from every source. And this article allows us to, in a sense, take the money that we have, but direct it to DPW. Correct. This goes into the big pot. Um, and then, so will this be an annual article, Dave, or what's is? Um, we had one in the spring. Didn't we? we had one in the spring, and uh, until such a time the law is amended to allow these monies to be spent directly without appropriation, this is the way that it would have to be done. Yeah. You know, there's a town meeting appropriation. So I do want to say we are revisiting our street reopening permit process and we're evaluating it. It's probably been about 10 years since we've looked at it. One of the things that I don't think was envisioned as part of our permitting process was just the vast amount of work that Eversource is doing. And a lot of that is in reaction to the um, the natural gas explosions that were in North Andover and, and Lawrence. Um, and so they're under a mandate to do it. So the way we had sort of written our regulations was about like just extending gas work or adding some services. It really wasn't this idea that they'd be tearing up such a large portion of the town. So one of the things we're looking at is right now, the only obligation they have to do a full repave is for moratorium work or when we have a negotiated you know, agreement. What we are thinking about doing is for over a certain volume of work. So really targeting the not the household just adding a connection, but really um, replacing an entire main, um, targeting PCIs, uh, our pavement condition indexes of over 70. So roads that are just, they're driving pretty well. Sometimes those roads could be seven or 10 years old, depending on the use of that road, but they don't fall under our moratorium, even though they're in good condition. So we're looking at revising that, um, which may end up making this a little bit more of a annual stable um, process. So the two hundred fifty-six thousand dollars that goes to DPW, um, is it then linked and has to be used for these roads here, or is it available for other roads? So the way we wrote the article was to provide some flexibility. It will be used for those roads that I listed out that were fully, um, where uh, the work was done, and we have not done any of the paving. Um, the Sunnyside and the Nichols Road were items that were currently on this year's um, were on this year's paving um, plan. Um, the area of Sunnyside and the neighborhoods that we were doing adjacent to it, some of them had not been paved in 20 years, so we needed to get to that this year. What that will do is it will allow us to pave more roads with our infrastructure money next year. If you don't spend all 256,000 of that, or do you anticipate? We will spend all 256,000 okay. of that, yes. And then some probably, right? Yeah. Yes, this year, um, the infrastructure article was uh, lighter than it typically is for roadway work. Um, we've been fortunate. We have some grants that we received. We negotiated with um, the state with MassDOT to help pay for the Dedham Ave project. So we were able to do that without um, having to go after too much Chapter 90 funds. Um, but we will be targeting these funds to be, they will be fully expended by the end of next year. Madam Chair, I make a motion um, that the Finance Committee recommend adoption of Article 1 appropriate for roadway improvements at our source. I'll second that. 
All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, article two. Appropriate for a community opioid settlement fund program. Mom, and could you bring up Dennis? Yep. Dennis Donaldson. And he may want Tiffany to join. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Muted, Tim. Good evening. Sorry about that. Uh, Good and Molly, if you are able to add Tiffany in, that would be great. Yeah. God bless you. Uh, so thank you for having us tonight. I'm Tim McDonald, I'm the Director of Health and Human Services. This is Tiffany Benoit, she's the Assistant Director of Public Health. Um, and Tiffany, I'll let you start off, I guess, um, if Finance Committee is okay with a brief sort of overview and then questions. Okay. We did send a memo, but it was only uh, around lunchtime today. Great. Uh, thank you, everybody. So um, last year we came and asked for some appropriation to be able to hire two consultants to do a strategic planning process for the usage of the funding. And we were able to hire those. We're finalizing the strategic plan by the end of this month. But throughout that process, um, it was, there were several of the areas that had been asked to be worked on, um, both by subject matter experts, as well as those who have been touched by opioid and addiction problems. Um, and so in that aspect and in being able to utilize the funding appropriately for the beginning, I'm gonna essentially say it's the first year of the strategic plan um, and be able to do a semi-formal um, but quick evaluation process on that at the end of the year, the end of the fiscal year to be able to provide that to town meeting in May. What we are asking for is to be able to increase one of our current, our peer recovery coach that we piloted for the last nine months, increase those hours to full time. Um, and the 69,000 will cover that plus um, all, I always forget the words, insurance and everything Benefits. like that. Benefits, thank you. Um, as a way to that person will then working with HR, we've come through to a title as behavioral health peer support specialist who will not only continue the peer recovery coaching, which has been piloted and has been shown to be a great benefit um, to the community, and will also work on action planning through the rest of the five years or longer um, strategic planning process. And then we got a lot of word and a lot of discussion about more Narcan and pushing Narcan out and reaching different audiences with Narcan and training on Narcan. So we thought we'd come to a $3,000 more to buy more um, sandboxes to put the Narcan in to kind of do a, a partnership with businesses and places we know that we have seen um, overdose or usage rates higher within Needham. And then the 10,000 to total up the 82,000 that we're asking for will um, be utilized in education programs, um, harm reduction efforts, trainings, and creating programs to um, to kind of utilize that and start the uh, action planning for the strategic plan for the five years. But the, um, Tiffany, if I might, the strategic plan will be, when will the strategic plan planning process conclude? So the strategic planning process will conclude at the end of this month, but out of a strategic plan, we will have the goals for the usage of the funding, but then we have to create the action planning off of to, to establish and to be able to accomplish those goals. So that will start and has kind of already started, but will officially start um, at the end of the month or beginning of October. So, um, I have a couple of questions about this, um, the position um, in which 
so the, the current position is a it's a peer recovery coach. And how many hours per week is, is that person work? So the current position is not, I mean, they're doing part-time work as a substance use prevention um, programming assistant. Um, they have been in, I mean, this position has been within Needham for a long time. Um, we just added in and piloted the peer recovery coaching and asked for money for hours because they needed the six months to be able to get those 500 hours. So now they're back to, back down to the 19 and a half hours um, that also covers prevention and peer recovery coaching. So if this article didn't exist, this position would be working 19 and a half hours and it's, and it's funded to work that 19 and a half hours through the end of the fiscal year or we're in FY25, is that correct? Correct, it's in a permanent position in our, our budget, yeah. Permanent part-time or- Part-time, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, and then this $69,000 would be to, so is that position that's presently at 69 if they're at 19 and a half hours now, they're supplementing it basically make it full-time so they'd go, it might write that the position would go from essentially a seventy thousand dollar position to one hundred and forty thousand dollar position. No, so this position is to take from we just assumed from November one till the end of June. Um, the funding I've done a job action questionnaire with HR and it was classified in a certain um, position area. So I just did the quick math of what it would be full time from November to June thirtieth. But the person's certainly not going to be paid one hundred forty thousand a year. Yeah, correct. Because this also oh. covers the benefits and stuff. So, um, which we did at a rate of about forty percent, just to be safe. So, what is the annualized compensation of this position? I guess is what we're trying to get to. Right. Oh, sure. So, um, I could tell you what the highest rate will be because we will hire somebody for that position. Um, and let me just grab that real fast. And that's based on what HR classified the role as within the town's um, Schedule A, right? Yes. But yes. there's somebody in the position now, isn't there? But it's a Scheduled C position, so it's not going to be, uh, we have to reclassify it in order for it to um, work the way that HR has asked it to work. I think so what's, the, a, what's the position currently being paid and what is what is what is it proposed to be paid when it moves from schedule A to schedule C? Sure. So the current positions make about 3150. Um and the move to that will be so the base would be 3193 to 4312 is the range. It will remain an hourly position. That was um, if, um, so we this eighty two thousand just talking about generically we though we have those funds in the town right that the state has given those to us yes right? and, we as of... them, and we accepted them in May I think didn't we yes and, and so and in... yeah so we have the eighty two thousand in front but we're not under a mandate to spend it right now we can see what the the your what the plan says I mean, what the um, and then, so in other words, it doesn't have to be spent right now. It can be spent in May after we see what the strategic plan is, what the proposals are to deploy the strategic plan um, and sort of do it in a holistic, comprehensive manner rather than sort of piecemeal doing it now. We're not losing the 82,000 if we don't act on it right now, correct? Correct. We would be losing it, time though. Yes. Well, that's not my, be... point. my point is I have money. We're not losing money if we don't deploy it right now. Isn't that correct? Correct. That is correct. I think the, okay. the challenge, at least from our perspective programmatically, 
is we have funding to carry us currently appropriated from um, 23 town meeting um, through basically the end of October. Um, if there isn't a further appropriation, then sort of the opioid work stops for basically till July 1. So I think but the, what happens, but, mm -hmm. but so next year um, is would the plan be that this then become this position then become part of your operating budget? Um, no. And it would be put forward as an increase in the operating budget for this position. Um, no. Or is it strictly and entirely to be funded just through these opiate funds? And once we're done with the opiate funds, then we're done with this position. That is the goal, yes. We do. To be strictly funded through opiate funds. The opioid funds do have a basically a 15 year time period where, um, and, you know, different um, parties to the settlement decided on different payment plans. Some, you know, funded year one through five immediately. Others, you know, spread out their payments over 15 years equally. Um, but the the legal settlement right now indicates that the town will continue to receive funds multiple times a year from different parties um, for, you know, the next decade plus. How much now is in the stabilization fund? Do you know, I don't, I didn't, so I'll put that up. I can get it for the committee. Mm -hmm. as of, I could tell you as of June, there was 329,858, but I'm pretty sure that Michelle told us they had received um, a few appropriations um, that needed to be entered. And, and Tim, you said there's no, towns are not under pressure to expend the funds at all. They, they are. That's not entirely <laughs> true. Um, there is required reporting, um, and there is, and I don't know all the details. There's some mechanism if you are, you know, purposefully not using the funds at all to make any effort to complete the terms of the settlement, then there is an opportunity for uh, basically a clawback. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to spend the full amount we get each year. We can, you know, especially if we have a plan, we can, you know, justify why we might get a hundred thousand in, but only spend 80,000. And to John's point earlier, we can also justify, you know, saying we might need more time to come up with a plan to, to spend down funds. That's a, a, an appropriate um, option. And I'm assuming that your strategic plan will say that will demonstrate that you need a peer recovery coach in this role for X period of time. So the strategic plan gives us goals to hit for this funding. It, it will not necessarily give us specifics on how to hit those goals. Uh -huh. um, it can give some recommendations, but especially based off of what we received from the community feedback. Um, but it probably will not say you should hire this or you should hire that. It will say more. The goals for the funding should be this, and these ones can be accomplished more readily versus these ones need more data to be able to be done. But the process of turning essentially those strategic goals into a work plan would be something we would have to develop. Yes. And essentially probably need help doing that, like somebody to help do that. So um, my thoughts on or my thinking on this is twofold. One, that um, we're so close to having the strategic plan done, and, and I'd like to see that accomplished and then you know, decide on things based on that, and we're not doing it piecemeal. Um, I, I think it, we, we purposefully have the strategic plan done, and, and we should wait for it to come in and then see what is is saying with respect to um, implementation methods and plans and two i'm just not satisfied with the sixty nine thousand. i don't get it the, the math doesn't add up to me um and i don't know whether so i just i can't vote on it right now because it just doesn't make if the position is between thirty one thousand and forty three thousand, but yet we're asking for sixty nine thousand. Oh, no, that's no, the no, hourly no. rate yeah that's an hourly dollar amount 31 dollars and i don't oh, know the change okay. and then 41 31 dollars so, 
five that's yeah, the pieces. range of the position so then Correct, yes. you can multiply times 37 and a half hours per week and you can multiply times so the highest weeks, range roughly. would be like seventy-seven thousand something annually and it's it just yeah. the fringe yeah. yep this is a position that currently exists it's a it's it, no it's a it's a part-time position that they're it's a part-time position that they're looking to make full-time okay as I, as I understand the explanation. That is so, correct. So there is someone in the world currently part-time. Yes. And that funding is out of your budget, Tim? It's the town operating budget. So uh, finance committee remembers a few years ago, uh, after 10 years, our drug-free community grant funding ended. Uh, and the town very generously stepped up and basically funded DFC drug-free communities was $125,000 a year. It paid for a full-time staff, a half a part-time staff, and some supplies, equipment, and trainings. Um, and the town stepped up essentially to replicate that in full. Um, so we we have in the budget uh, a full-time person that shows up on the PRD1 and a, excuse me, a part-time position that's on the DSR3 every year. And that's the topic of this conversation, the part-time person, correct? Right, the, the request for the opioid money is to say, we've got this person at part-time, we think they'd be good full-time, we have this opioid money, we'd like to convert them into that role, please, with sort of split funding. And it would continue to be... They would do both uh, prevention bucks. work and... Oh, sorry. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, and they do prevention work and recovery coaching. The recovery coaching would be the focus of the opioid money. Uh, the prevention work would be with the town sort of operating budget money. Can I just ask a kind of, uh, would these, I think I heard someone say that this new role would be the person that would be helping to implement the strategic plan. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, well, they wouldn't necessarily, I mean, potentially implement, but yeah. also plan the action plan, helping to pro is, program, to program oh, development, nice. things like that. Oh, sorry, sorry, why? It's on the top wire. Yeah. Need me to repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. So yes, this position would essentially help create some of the action planning, create some of the programs, because they would be able to coordinate with the prevention services and the peer recovery and do that kind of piece. So okay. they're going to be so largely the doer of the coach work. Is... Okay. I, I just, in my mind, I just see these as being like two different skill sets of people, but I guess it's okay. We do have, as, as I think Tiffany mentioned, we do have a staff member that's been in the role um, of uh, the part-time funded town operating budget funded role. Um, for a couple of years. She is a person uh, living in recovery uh, and she expressed an interest in um, becoming a recovery coach. We had some money from the opioids. We petitioned to use it. And so the town was able to do a pilot program of having her add some hours. I think we, was it like six to eight hours a week, Tiffany, um, <clears throat> that we use with the opioid money to basically have her practice and become a recovery coach and to start working with clients. Um, so I agree that it's a uh, interesting skill set to have sort of both halves in one person, but we do think the functions are important. And right now we think we can deliver them in one role. And, and if you didn't have this um, <coughs> appropriation, you could not expand this position. Correct. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm always interested in trying to find ways to do it, but um, we don't have any other money that would be used for that source right now. You know, we always hunt for grants and things like that, but right now there isn't anything that would fit the bill. So let me let me see if I can understand this. So when we appropriated the FY25 budget, um, which is an appropriate, within that it included this currently existing part-time staff member, correct? 
Yes, there's, and I don't know the number off my top of my head, but in the DSR three, there's a substance use prevention program support assistant three or something, and it's I'm not exactly sure if it's twenty seven or thirty three thousand that's in the DSR three, but something on that order of magnitude. Didn't they also get a, more money for another? So yeah, so 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 that position. And in, in, in prior to July 1st, what did, was there someone working in that position? Yes. Okay. And then that person continued on and is continuing on to this day. And do I hear you correctly that the funding for that current position ends, we will have no more money for that person as of November 1st in your budget? No more opioid money to do the recovery coaching part. We've been doing a pilot program where she's added, um, with HR's permission, six to eight hours on top of her 19 and a half to do recovery coaching using the opioid money. And um, that's what's ending. That's what's ending. And then, you know, if we keep her on a certain point, eventually she becomes eligible for benefits. So if we don't have the funds to keep her above 20 hours a week, then she has to go down and we can't have her work over that again. Um, otherwise, we have to have enough money to both pay the delta in the hours, but also the impact of being eligible for benefits now. Madam Chair, I think maybe uh, for next week can come back and show the breakdown of how the salary is calculating and what the benefits are, where the funding sources are, so it's a little easier to yeah. follow. I think that would be great. I think we can great. get that together for you. All right. Okay. Thank you. So we can move we'll table this for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, Article Four. This is you, Dave. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be talking about some numbers to make it a little easier for everybody to follow along. I just have a one-page handout. Madam Chair. So there is a request to uh do uh, a supplemental appropriation to the finance department budget um, and the funding source would be the reserve fund uh, and rather than coming in for reserve fund transfer which would have been what I the route that I would have taken if we didn't have a special town meeting coming up but since we had a special town meeting it's inappropriate that town meeting uh, make the transfer given the amount of money it is the uh, town is required every five years to have what's known as a recertification of its appraisal practices, its assessing practices um, by the Department of Revenue. And that looks at in terms of how uh, valuation is done, making sure it's following the, the models and the requirements that the state uh, puts out. This work uh, primarily is done by consultants on the third party. When the budget was put together for FY25, the, um, I had, uh, there's $60,000 that we carry in the budget every year because we're using consultants every year, particularly in the area of personal property and uh, business assets because uh, residential tends to be more straightforward, there's comparable sales and everything, uh, but uh, commercial property, um, and you generally don't have two properties that are alike and they're much more difficult to figure out the calculation. So we rely upon outside services. And of course, the personal property, which is really business property, there is just so many different types of equipment. So there are companies that know what the going value is from everything from a filing cabinet to uh, micro editions that channel five and um, and um, NBC Universal yeah. Studio have. So that's what the 60,000 is. In anticipation of the recertification process, 
or we had uh, the budget that was approved had an additional $58,000. So in total, the budget uh, for finance for uh, valuation services was at $118,000. When the bids came in, there are basically two contracts. The first contract uh, is uh, for the personal property uh, services where they have to look at the um, um, personal business property of all the uh, business customers in town. And that cost, uh, bid, uh, bid cost came in at $65,600. The... Um, the bigger uh, co uh, contract that came in at one hundred and forty-three thousand. That's working with the towns uh, with the uh, camera system. That's the uh, computer aided mass appraisal system, uh, which is used updating the cost tables, updating uh, the um, land values, making sure they're not broken links, making sure things are are, are tracking correctly, and that's uh, hundred. Forty-three thousand. Those are those are one-year costs. Sixty thousand of that, or in other words, you're looking at their two hundred eight thousand six hundred dollars. Sixty thousand of that's recurring, so we're going to be paying sixty thousand uh, in twenty-six, sixty thousand in twenty-seven, mm -hmm. and then of course whatever inflation brings in the out-year contracts, uh, but. Uh, the recertification year is the expensive year. So at $208,600 plus the $118,000 that is in the budget, I have a shortfall that can't be made up anywhere else within the finance department expense budget of $90,600. And that is what the request is. And as I said, the funding source would be to reduce the reserve fund by uh, 9,600 and increase the finance expense by $9,600. These are contracted prices of so the money that we spent. So I guess, why don't we just do a reserve fund transfer? We could have, but I was just thinking, given the magnitude, uh, if, you want, uh, if we want a town meeting to have a say in the process. There's, there's no legal or well, logistical reason not to do a reserve fund transfer. It's more, more in terms of transparency. You know, no one would ever accuse you of not being transparent. <laughs> That's the least of my worries with you. Um, have I have just wonder long conversation. Yeah, I see. I just wonder with the town meeting with with it being you know so complex with um with the uh, communities act discussions that um whether we even need to bog them down with this. I mean, hopefully it wouldn't get fucked. And I appreciate why you're bringing it this way. Um, I'm just, and I'm raising it. This is, you know, something we've obviously had reserve fund transfers for a lot more um, and most likely will going forward. So I am, I not, I'm not diminishing the, the reason why you're asking for it. I just sort of, I wonder if, if, if it might be better to streamline it and just do a reserve fund transfer, but I, I welcome other people's thoughts and, and obviously yours as well. I can't think that's what they trust us to do for these types of things, right? I mean, you know, well, this isn't, you know, as minimal impact really on the citizens at large. It's just sort of a, a, another, you know, an accounting, but not accounting, but it's obviously an expense that's come in higher than we budgeted for. Mm -hmm. Probably not an expense people even know we were doing that. I mean, if you were taking, if you, for example, we were paying it from another line item in the budget and, and town meeting approved each of the line items, I think we would have to go back to them, but I think we'll approve the reserve fund, you know, which, you know, for, um, you know, to work through situations like this. Um, so that would be what my inclination would be to handle it. That I, way. I agree. Yeah. If you're going to have a reserve fund, use it. Like, and this, this is the type of circumstance where I, I can definitely bring it back to you next week I, as reserve fund. Okay. Give you the money quicker that way too, right? Well, that clearly is <laughs> yeah. the benefit. Yeah. Um, and then I can have the select board pull that article because it's not needed otherwise. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what people. That that's that. you all. Okay with that, Joe? Yes. Yeah. Karen? Yep. Okay. Save us fifteen minutes. 
Yeah. And, get, and get me the money sooner. Okay. But I, I don't want to thank you for yeah. the way you approach it. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, the next article is the Sewer Enterprise Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, basically are actions that we knew were coming. Uh, the first item is to increase the salary and wage line by 24424 That's uh, shown right in the uh, draft warrant. Mm -hmm. And um, that is to cover the increase the salaries that were approved with the collective bargaining agreements that town meeting approved. Uh, unlike the general fund, which there is a budget line that allows for the transfer, um, that's the CPS line and town-wide expenses to cover the votes of town meeting to the appropriate line items. The enterprise funds do not have that. The only way they can counter enterprise, and you can't transfer money right. to the general fund right. to the enterprise right. funds. Uh, that would be a 2% increase in the salary and wage line. The second item is the MWRA assessment, uh, final assessment came in, and it is $360,570 more uh, than what we went to town meeting with, and that's a fixed known number, and that's our assessment for the year. I would make a motion that we, the Finance Committee, recommend adoption of Article 5 to amend the FY25 Sewer Enterprise Fund budget. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The uh, <clears throat> next one is the Water Enterprise Fund budget. And we're looking at uh, increasing the salary wage line by. Um, uh, thirty-nine thousand three hundred five. That's a net increase of two point four percent. The same explanation as with the um, with the sewer enterprise fund. It's a result of the collective bargaining agreements approved uh, in the spring by town meeting. And on the positive side, in this case, the MWRA assessment final is down by $674,145. So the net result of town meeting actions that they approved the article as stated is a reduction in the uh, Water Enterprise Fund budget of $634,840. Wow. That's a lot. We don't have any influence over the end of I mean, we just are like can use less water, <laughs> and actually, no, in it, terms of like what we're going to get charged, I guess it's, all, it's it, all you know, the rates, it's a, based upon the prior year uh, activity. In the case of water, it's based upon your consumption the prior calendar year preceding the fiscal year. So, yes, the word water use, and the reason it's down is because we use less water in the, in the prior year because it was. Essentially a wetter year, mm -hmm. not as much irrigation. Not yeah, flushing. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> not flushing as well. That's it. Um, and I, I'll make a motion. Yeah, go for it. It's always good to make a good news motion. <laughs> um, I uh, recommend and make a motion um, that the finance committee recommend adoption of Article Six, amending the FY twenty five Water Enterprise Fund budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The uh, next article um, is uh, on pay bills of a prior year. I always sort of get a kick out of this. I uh, would always, um, wouldn't it be nice if we could say to the electric company mm -hmm. or say that, well, our, our calendar year is closed, so we have to have a family meeting to vote if we're going to pay you or not. Um, and uh, so, but we can't uh, bill the prior fiscal year to be paid unless uh, town meeting appropriates the money because we can't use a current year mm -hmm. budget to pay a prior year. In this case, this was for medical services. Uh, it's actually associated with pre-employment physicals that uh, Israel Deaconess does. It's from 2022. It took them a year to bill us. Um, wow. 
It, it, yes, it was um, very interesting. Yeah, get my mark, they get me my mark, you know, it's nice. <laughs> and, uh, and the charge is $518. Uh, this is the one which in Waterbury will have to make an announcement tonight and spoke at the town meeting. Oh, is it really? Yes. You can't. They no. can't do it on the consent agenda? It's not. Oh, oh, yeah, you can. can. Consent, yeah. you could do that, but okay. being unanimous. But if uh, otherwise, well, it okay. would have to be kind. I didn't realize so much that. Time that's spend right, on five hundred dollars uh, in town meeting. A lot. I, I know. I've seen <laughs> the craziness. <laughs> uh -huh. Does the hospital know we're, we're actually taking this to town meeting vote? <laughs> yes, they do know. Do they really? Yeah, because they're. Well, they make why that. Why haven't you paid it yet? And of course, we might we we remind it's them. It's impossible. Oh well, one we can't pay this year, but then it said it also took you a year to bill us. So we yeah. already spent that money. Uh, it was turned back. Right? It was turned back, actually. There was a turn back in that line. <laughs> I make a motion that um, the Finance Committee recommend the adoption of Article 7 unpaid bill of prior year. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait. And uh, the next item, uh, Madam Chair, is uh, this is one of those articles you're going to see, uh, Article 8. Um, every, always at every special, year, time, right? yeah, special town meetings. Uh, a change in law requires the money that the cable companies pay in order to have uh, um, programming that's provided by the local cable channel that's uh, you know, educational, public, and governmental, such as broadcasting town meeting, right. and broadcasting the select board meetings. Uh, uh, there's a fee that they charge and they pay, and it was used to be paid sent directly to the cable company. The, uh, I'm sorry, to the cable TV. Uh, there's a change that requires town meeting to appropriate the money to be uh, spent to buy the local cable television. And um, in the spring, we had received 471675 And since town meeting and an additional $143,998 has been received. These monies actually put aside in a special fund because they have to be reserved for this purpose, but it does require the town meeting action. So does it go into the general receipts like that? No, it's saying? not. No, it's so, not a general receipt. It's specifically uh, reserved in a special account, reserved for the uh, appropriation by town meeting for this purpose. Okay. It's something we're hoping will get fixed in one of the but this had been recently changed, right? right. The mechanism was so, changed like two years ago. Uh, so. The change was uh, later than that, okay. but we became aware of it a few years ago. Uh -huh. So, um, and then we talked with the cable company and understand how this is going to work. This certainly makes it a little more difficult for them because they have to meet the payroll, they have to pay their vendors and such. And now they're... Do they have a delay? They, they have a delay as well. So if, does it have to be this way where there's an appropriation in the spring and then another one in the fall? And it, it has to be a town meeting, though. So, so we can't do it all. If the money it, has to be in the year. fund before you can appropriate. We can't appropriate unless the cash is in the bank. I see. Yeah. So this 143 came in between May and now. Yes, correct. And it makes no sense to just do it once at any real town meeting. Or wait till, because there's going to be more. Well, the part of the reasons and the specialists is that we have... Uh, the special one in the spring is because we have more time to uh, you know the total dollars that we've collected so we can get as much as what we received to them. Um, and then, of course, the fall uh, would be the other one. Uh, you know, the you time. Know how, how much of this budget, how much of their budget is these fees? Just most of the well, money. Most of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I think this is a significant portion. This covers not only their operating, but it also covers their capital improvement mm -hmm. investments. If, if, uh, for instance, these items here which were installed by the cable company and stuff that came from their budget, okay. Okay. which is part of what these funds represent. So, um, I'm sure I read. Make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend adoption of Article 8 to appropriate for the public educational and government programming. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, real quick, they popped in earlier to say they voted to recommend. 
Okay. The CPC. So if you wanted to take it back up. Yeah. Sure. Let's see that. So with the CPC having uh, voted formally to um, approve the um, town meeting article incorporating the high school tennis courts, I will then make a motion that the finance committee recommend adoption of article 13. 13. 13. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. That is passed. Um, and then the last item for discussion is uh just to be just to begin among ourselves a discussion of the zoning articles related to the MBTA communities act. Um it's a it's my our plan that we'll be meeting with Lee Newman in planning and community development uh two times and so the first now is we're going to change our finance committee meeting the first week of October and have it on Monday, September 30th. Right. Is that okay? Right. Um, because she was unavailable on the 25th and wanted to hold the meeting on Wednesday, the second, which yeah. right before the Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. and we've never had a meeting. We've never held a meeting like that then. So we we decided in this ex kind of extraneous circumstance to change the meeting to a Monday night. Unfortunately, um, we did email me today and let me know that uh, their school consultant or our RKG, RKG consultant is unavailable on the 30th, um, but she'll make sure that they, they are available on the 9th. And unfortunately, Heidi Frail of the select board is also unavailable on the 30th, but she's available on the 30th. Uh, Natasha Espada is available on the 30th, so we can at least have those discussions on the 30th. What we was going to do is kind of draft some draft some kind of topical mm -hmm. items for discussion and send that to me. So I'll distribute that and maybe amongst ourselves we can kind of come up with even before their first presentation a list of questions that you know we would like to have some answers to and further investigations. So with that, I will open it for discussion. Just um, just looking at the warrant, um, I see that we've taken the only ones we haven't taken action are on Article Three, which is to appropriate for Stephen Palmer planning, and then the, these um, MBQ communities. So that's all we have left. Right. Right. It, do we have any idea on the, when the yeah. Stephen Palmer when did the Apollo will come in, or who's who's presenting on that, David? Uh, that would come from the select board and Kate. town manager, and Kate. that would the be the ninth. Sure. On the ninth, but okay. we don't need a meeting on the twenty fifth. What you're asking, <coughs> we don't need a meeting on the twenty fifth. Yeah, it doesn't right. Um, did we just tell Tim Tim McKee to come back? Oh, uh, I think that's. I can report back the information for the finance committee. Determination. So okay. we could do that on the 30th as well. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, the October 9th then would be the Stephen Palmer, and then obviously the MBTA communities. The 30th would be M MBTA communities and further information on the opioids, opioids. The uh, other articles, the town hall repairs and upgrades, which would also be on, on, on the ninth. Yeah. Yes. That's where the other hundred thousand for overlays. Okay, thanks, Dave. And the capital improvement fund. That's the restructuring of it. And that would be on the ninth as well. That can be on the ninth. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that means what? No meeting the twenty fifth, and no meeting the second. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Right. But. The meeting for the second is really on the third or Monday the thirtieth. Right. Okay. Yep. And you reserved this for us on the I already did that. Okay. Yes. So um is there any any 
idea while well, we might get that thing that we can react to for the questions for the 30th or uh she said by friday i think is what she's told me I got call. so well, we just Sorry, this is slow. So for, for, you know, just for my own, just speaking for myself, I mean, my biggest questions and what I need information on is, is sort of the, the, the justifications for, the reasoning for, and the backup for um, the base plan versus the other plan. Um, and, uh, so at, at this most general level, it's, it's deciding why, what, what, what are the differences in the two plans? Um, well, the base plan, plan is pretty formulated in terms of what is required. By the but, but so is the other one. It's just an expansion of it. Well, no, the, the other plan isn't required. It's we it's above and beyond what right. is required. Right, right. So, but but I so I, what I understand is why that as opposed to something lesser, more of it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then what the assumptions are that go into it, um, mm -hmm. both um, with respect to school population and capacity, and then operating budget, capital budget implications. Well, we um. When you attended this school future needs meeting this week, right? Tuesday night, yeah. Tuesday night, they discussed having new yeah. data from right. the but that data. data is not going to be available until December. Right. And I think it is, as I look at it, it very much has to do with some of the assumptions that are particularly being made into the, the second from the neighborhood plan. Um, there's 66 more children in school now than they had expected. Um, and so McKibben needs to... You mean currently this year? This year, yeah. But, and most of them are in the high school, right? Middle school and high school. Um, so there's a question of, of what how that affects... So the report, and, and as I understand it, the zoning is premised on the McKibben report of last year. We don't have but, McKibben's report from this year. But the McKibben report of last year didn't take into account anything any impact from the MBTA communities. Correct. Right. And maybe I was saying it the way. Is that, right. is that I, my understanding of the formula that was used was taking McKibben's report from last year and then putting a, a factor into it and saying this is what they're expecting the children, the number of children to I be. I think it's actually, I don't know if it's McKibben's report, but I think it was just assumptions based on the type of units that are. Right, that's the second, yeah. That would be in zone four, the assumption, you know, a two, you know, two bedroom would have one, three kids or something like that. That that's I don't know if that's the same working assumptions that McKibben uses, but I don't necessarily know that they the assumptions they use were similar to the way McKibben would look at right. additional. Right. And 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 so the whole thing is we're not gonna have the benefit of McKibben's work until December. Um and uh and particularly when you see that already this particular year, there's a difference of 66 between what was projected and what the actual actual was. Um, and then the capacities of the schools, um, I'm very interested in how they came up with those capacities, and what they're based on, um, and what the timing all of it is. Because if, if you're assuming you can fit these children in because the school master plan is going to be completed, but the school master plan is a 15 or 20 year plan. And these kids could be here in four years. It could be or nothing gets done or, in four years. But but you have to plan on it's going to right. be done. No, I mean, understand. You don't you don't pass something unless you expect it all to be done. It, it there's no reason that that's what you have, at least I view you, that's what you have to premise it on. Um and so you're premising it, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where you, you know, the town could be at risk for having more children than the facilities they have. Um, and that's, so I, that's what I want to explore and, and discuss when, when folks come in. Okay, anybody else? I would really like to know the three other big projects that have been done in multifamily projects have been done in town. What, I haven't seen any 
impact? How many kids come from Rodera? How many kids come from Kendrick, for example, or childhood of land in their nose or that? Because that's um, that need, I think they have. They, they do. They do. See it's it. in there. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's in there. Um, and that's part of how they came up with their projections. Right. So they looked at that. Now, but having said that, November was built primarily as a lot of one bedroom mm -hmm. units for that purpose. So I'm not so sure that's directly well comparable. That, I guess for the one bedroom unit. Correct. But. Correct. And I forget this. The, I mean, the, probably the most controversial thing in this is is the harder building. And I I understand I don't understand how that relates because that's. I don't understand if the Carter building is above and beyond the neighborhood plan, or is it no? And or no. that is the neighborhood plan. It is, well, it is in both, obviously, but it, but they. My understanding is, the, you know, that the assumptions on what will go there has changed in the last six months, to increasing the number of units, from a hundred and. 70 to 234. Right, so like 230. But is that now, is that provided for in the neighborhood plan? That's my question. Or is it? I would assume so. That's a big. But I don't know the, yeah. Because it's a big part of uh, allowing us to get to the number we need to get to. We have to come up with 1,800 new units. Just to, that's the way the, the math works, or 1,900, whatever the number is. And that's the base plan. And that's how they came. They sort of backed into it, it was mm -hmm. based on. Forget you know how the density of you know relative to the transit stations. I think that's forget I forget how the formula works, but base plan basically addresses the, the minimum required of additional potential units. Right. I just thought Avery Manor was above and beyond the base plan, but I wouldn't think so. I think there's a long way to getting us to where we need to get to. But anyway, those are questions we'll get. We'll get the answers. Is the group that was advocating for the special study for impact on the infrastructure still active? Have they been playing with the planning board? Or uh, anybody know? I think they are. They have a website. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, they, I think he still very much wants an engineering study done. Yeah. So that's right. That is not over. That's not on one if there's no money for it. Yeah. Right now. But you're right. Um, anyone else? Gary, just so you know, just to answer your question, on uh, those three projects, Charles River Landing, Kendrick, and Mardera, Mardera. In FY25, there's 111 students from those three. And how many units in total? Um, Charles River has, Charles River Landing has 244 one bedrooms or studios, 106 two bedrooms. And what? Kendrick has 19 one bedrooms, 103 two bedrooms, 14 three bedrooms. Modera has 202, 149, and 39. That's so about 800 units. Okay. Total. Yeah. Oh, that's... So that's in there. They, um, we, uh, I can, I'll distribute it to everyone. Um, and Kaladi put together what the, the stuff they're giving to McKibben and okay. from um, the community that information. And so that's where, that's where that is. So I can get that to everybody. All right, and when I received that information from Lee, I thought she had said Friday, but I'll she did see what end of week. At, by the end of the week. I'll just we'll, Molly will distribute that. Um, and there's nothing else on NBTA communities. Uh, just like to announce that we do have a new finance committee member, Lydia Wu. Uh, she was just uh, installed. I guess appointed. 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 Uh, the other day, and so we'll need a packet. Can, can you put together a packet of 
Okay, that would be great. And then I'd like to schedule some time for her to sit with you too. Um, she a town meeting member? She's not a town meeting member. So Maybe when that time is scheduled, I can join. That would be great, right? Because I'm sorry, Joe, you didn't yeah, have a chance to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll touch base with the two of you and we'll figure out a time that works. Make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. So second. seconded by Barry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. So nothing. Um, next week next is September 30th. September 30th.